It has happened to all of us from time to time, we're driving down the highway when something so unusual, so odd passes us by that we do a double take. What is that? Who made it? And sometimes even, why would you buy that? We're talking about vehicles like the unforgettable behemoth known as the Pontiac Aztec. Unless you needed to cart around a cello with you at all times, what was its purpose and why did anyone buy it? Chevrolet El Camino The Chevy El Camino was a unique attempt at creating a combination coupe and pickup truck. Debuting in 1958, the El Camino didn't have the best start in terms of sales, even being nixed by the Chevy brand after just two years. However, in 1964 Chevy brought back the El Camino with the body style that it has been known for. Offered with a 300 horsepower V8, the 64 El Camino was a beast of American engineering. The combination coupe truck also featured a design that was more in line with the rest of the Chevrolet pickup cohort. While the El Camino was retired after the 1987 model year, it did inspire a few other vehicle designs. The most modern of these is the all-new 2022 Hyundai Santa Cruz. However, there is a big difference between the two semi-pickup trucks is what they're combined with. The cabin of the Santa Cruz is much more SUV-like than the old El Camino. P Car If this flamboyantly green car commissioned by Bird's Eye, sellers of frozen vegetables, for a 2005 television commercial doesn't compel you to eat your veggies, nothing will. Sometimes called the Volkswagen P Car, it is actually a mishmash vehicle designed by a London-based company called Asylum. Built on the chassis of an off-road go-kart, the P-Car features headlights from a VW Beetle and is fitted with a Honda engine, though the car lacks gears. It can reach a top speed of approximately 60 miles per hour and was built to purposefully fall apart during the commercial. If you're interested in giving peas a chance, the P-Car is reportedly on display at the Unilever Ice Cream and Frozen Foods Company in Walton on the Thames in England. 1964 Austin Mini Moak Somewhat evocative of a U. S Army Jeep, the Austin Mini Moke was produced in 1964 for the British Army, which ultimately rejected it due to its low ground clearance. A front-wheel drive version was offered in England, Portugal, and Australia. While it appealed to some, the British Motor Corporation ceased production of this version after only four years. The Austin Mini Moke lacks doors and a hardtop, and it doesn't offer much else in the way of utility or fun. The light off-road vehicle was marketed for recreational and farm use but, ultimately, only 10% of the 14,500 made were sold domestically. Later versions of the Moke with more comfortable seats and better ground clearance were much more popular. The Moke is now sold as an all-electric vehicle with a starting price of just under $21,000. Lotus Avija While the Lotus Avija may not strike everyone as weird, its James Bond styling and $2 plus million price tag firmly place it in the category of unusual and out of reach for most. Unfortunately, or fortunately? The price tag doesn't include invisibility or rocket propulsion. Only 130 models of this all-electric car are being made as a tribute to its Lotus type number. Although it lacks James Bond's rocket, it does boast 2,000 horsepower and will go from 0 to 60 miles per hour in less than 3 seconds. And, at just over 3,700 pounds, it is expected to be the lightest EV hypercar ever to enter production. Making a dramatic exit, the rear features two Venturi tunnels edged with red LED lights. If the exterior isn't striking enough, the interior features exposed carbon fiber, a honeycomb effect, and a square steering wheel. Sadly, this beast won't be street legal in the U.S. 1970 AMC Gremlin One advertisement for the Gremlin boasted, if you can afford a car, you can afford two Gremlins. The question remains, why would you want to buy even one? In a hurried attempt to get ahead of competitors, the Gremlin was essentially an AMC Hornet with the back chopped off. The result is an oddly proportioned, poorly named subcompact car that's left a lasting impression. The Gremlin, fittingly introduced on April 1st, was offered in two passenger and four passenger versions. Instead of a trunk or even a hatchback, the cargo space is accessed by lifting the rear window in the two-door version. The four-door version has a fixed rear window, though it's hard to believe there was any cargo space left after adding two additional seats. It did sell, reportedly both Bill Clinton and George W. Bush owned one at some point, but it was almost universally mocked and mechanically reviled. If you enjoyed this video, kindly press the like button. Also don't forget to subscribe with notifications on, so that you don't miss out on videos like this. Thank you for watching.